Here are the top 10 math riddles and puzzles that my math students have fun solving. Puzzle number one, find the missing number in the table. Here's a hint if you're having trouble. Look at how the middle column relates to the two outside columns. And here's the answer. Notice that each number in a middle square is the sum of the digits in the square directly to the right and left of it. If we focus on this row, notice that if I were to add these two digits, eight plus five, or add these two digits, seven plus six, those sums would both equal the middle number in that row, 13. And that holds true for all three of these rows, which would mean that since four plus two and one plus five are both equal to six, the missing number in this table is six. Puzzle number two. Using no more than four straight lines, connect all of the dots. Each line must start exactly where the previous line finished. To help get you started, here's one attempt that doesn't work. Line one, two, three, and four. Notice that those four straight lines did not connect this middle dot. So go ahead, give it a try, see if you can find a solution. If you're having trouble, here's a hint. You have to think outside of the box. Okay, here's one possible solution. Starting in the top left, I'm going to draw a line that goes down, but the trick is I need to extend it beyond that last circle. And then I can draw a line up diagonally through those two circles, and then back across through those circles, and then diagonally down through those two remaining circles. Notice with only four straight lines, we were able to connect all nine of the dots. And here's a challenge for you. Could you do this with only three straight lines? Puzzle number three. Insert any combination of math operations to make each equation true. And the math operations you can choose from are the four basic operations, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, but also you can add parentheses, you can square root a number, and you can also use the factorial operation. And let me get you started so you can see how this works by doing this equation where three twos have to equal six. I could just insert an addition operation between each pair of twos to give me two plus two plus two, which is equal to six. Now go ahead and try the rest. If you're stuck, let me give you a few more answers to give you some ideas. For the equation involving three threes, we could do three times three, which is nine, and then subtract three to make it equal six. For the equation involving three fours, we could add the square roots of each of those fours. So I'd have root four plus root four plus root four, which is two plus two plus two, which equals six. And how about one more? Five divided by five would be equal to one, so if I do five plus one, I would get six. And another hint I wanna give you is what the factorial operation does. In case you don't know, n factorial would be equal to n times n minus one times n minus two, all the way down till you get to a factor of one. So for example, five factorial would be five times four times three times two times one. Or three factorial would be three times two times one. And there's also a special rule that may be helpful is that zero factorial is equal to one. So with all of that, give the rest a try. Okay, let me fill in the rest of the answers. Now I haven't filled in the answers for these three rows yet because those are the rows that my students usually have the most difficulty with. Let me walk you through the ones. I could find the sum of those three ones, that would give me three, and then if I factorial that sum, three factorial is three times two times one, which is six. And then similarly, I could change each of these zeros into a one by doing zero factorial for each of them. And now this problem becomes the same as the three ones. I just add them together and then factorial that sum. And then lastly for the eights, which are usually the most difficult for my students, what we could do is do eight divided by eight, which is one, if we do eight plus one, we get nine. Square rooting that, 
we get three. And then if we factorial three, that's three times two times one, which is six. Now keep in mind, there are multiple possible solutions for these. This is just one set of possible solutions. And for a challenge, can you make three tens equal to six using these same operations? Puzzle number four. Can you find the missing number? If you need a hint, first of all, hopefully you've realized that the answer is not 15. The pattern of each number, being the difference of the two numbers directly above it, does not hold true for the entire diagram. Yes, 99 minus 72 is 27, and 45 minus 27 is 18, and it does continue for a while, but if we look down at the very end of the diagram, 21 minus 13 is 8, but in this cell, I see a 7. So try and find a different pattern that relates the numbers and holds true for the entire diagram. Okay, here's the answer. Notice that each number is the sum of all of the digits of the two numbers in the row above them. So for example, this 27 is a sum of the digits that make up the numbers 72 and 99. If I were to do 7 plus 2 plus 9 plus 9, I would get 27. And if I add all the digits of these two numbers, 2 plus 7 plus 4 plus 5, I would get 18. And that pattern holds true for this entire diagram. So to get this missing value, I would just add the four digits to make up those two numbers. 2 plus 1 plus 3 plus 6. And that's equal to 12. And just to verify that this answer works, if I add those four digits and those two numbers, 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 8, that does equal 13. Puzzle number 5. Find the next number in the sequence. If you need a hint, this pattern is called a see and say pattern. Okay, here's the answer. Notice that each number is just a communication of what digits the previous number is made up of. This first number is just 1, 1, which is why the next number says 1, 1. And then the second number is made up of two ones, which is why the next number says two, one. And then this number, it's made up of, it starts with one, two, which is why the next number starts by saying one, two. And then the next number is one, one, which is why we see a one, one right there. And then this number starts with one, one, which is why this says one, one. Then there is 1, 2, which is why it says 1, 2. And then there are two ones, which is why it says 2, 1. And then hopefully you can get how this pattern works, so let's come up with the next number. This number here starts with 1, 3. So the next number in the sequence will start with 1, 3. Then if I look back to the previous number, what's next is 1, 1. So I'll write 1, 1. And then there are two twos. So I'll write two, two. And then there are two ones. So I would write two, one. And if you want a challenge, what do you think the next number in this sequence would be? Puzzle number six. See if you can find the missing number inside of this triangle. If you need a hint, for each individual triangle, you can use the outside numbers to calculate the inside number. Okay, here's the answer. To find the number inside of any of these triangles, using the outside numbers, you find the product of the two larger numbers and then subtract the square of the smaller number. So looking at this first triangle, if I find the product of the two larger numbers, eight times five, and then subtract the square of the smaller number, so subtract three squared, I get 40 minus nine, which is 31. For this triangle, the bigger numbers on the outside are three and two, so I'll find their product and then subtract the square of the smaller number. That gives me six minus one, which is five. For the third triangle, I would do eight times six minus two squared, 
which is 48 minus 4, which is 44. And then for the last triangle, I would multiply the larger numbers 10 times 5, and then subtract the smaller number squared. That gives me 50 minus 16, which is 34. Puzzle number 7. Let's see if you can figure this one out. It starts off with the basic fact that 4 is equal to 4. And if 4 equals 4, then of course 5 is equal to... If you were to guess 5, you'd be wrong. 5 is actually equal to 4. And 4 is equal to 4. And let me actually give you what all of the numbers up to 10 are equal to, and then I'll challenge you at the end. 6 would be equal to, well, if 4 equals 4 and 5 equals 4, then you would probably guess that 6 equals 4 as well. But it doesn't. 6 actually equals 3. And 3 is equal to 5, and 5 equals 4, and 4 equals 4. 7 is equal to 5. And you're probably getting the pattern 5 equals 4 and 4 equals 4. 8 also equals 5. And 5 equals 4 and 4 equals 4. And then 9. Are you getting the pattern yet? 9 is actually equal to 4. And 4 equals 4. And then 10. 10 is equal to 3. And then 3 equals 5. 5 equals 4. And 4 equals 4. So with all of this information, could you figure out what 34 is equal to? If you're stuck and you weren't able to calculate what 34 is equal to yet, here's a hint. Math is equal to 4. Okay, so here's the answer. Hopefully you figured out that each number is equal to the number of letters that's in its name. That's why 4, F-O-U-R, which has 1, 2, 3, 4 letters, is equal to 4. So 34 has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 letters in its name. So 34 is equal to 10. And 10 has three letters in its name, so 10 equals three. And three has one, two, three, four, five letters in its name, so three is equal to five. And five has one, two, three, four, so five is equal to four. And then of course, four has four letters in its name, so four is equal to four. Puzzle number eight. Make an equation that equals each of these numbers using exactly four fours and any combination of these math operations. You can use plus, minus, multiply, and divide. You can add a decimal place, take the factorial of a number, add parentheses, or square root a number. And notice I gave you the numbers between zero and 20, but I also added the number 37, because when I give this problem to my classes, often they get stuck on the number 37. And before you start, let me actually do one of the numbers for you. I'll give you an equation for what zero is equal to. Using four fours and any combination of these operations, I could say that 44 minus 44 is equal to zero. And now go ahead and you try the rest. Okay, if you need a hint, let me give you a couple more of these answers just so you get some ideas about how you could find the rest. For example, for number 17, I could do 4 times 4 to get 16, and then I need to add 1, so I would add 4 divided by 4. And then for 18, I could do 4 divided by 0.4, 4 divided by 0.4 is 10, and then I could just add 2 more 4s to get it up to 18. Hopefully that's given you a couple ideas, now try and do the rest. All right, let me show you possible answers for the rest of the numbers. And keep in mind, there's lots of ways that you could do these. So there's the answers from 0 to 20. Were you able to get 37 as well? Here's one way you could have got 37. Notice we have 4 factorial, which is 24, plus 2 brings me to 26. Dividing it by 2 brings you to 13. And then 13 plus 24 is 37. And if you want an extra challenge, could you get all of the numbers between 0 and 50 using exactly four fours and these operations?
Puzzle number nine. Here's the equation 5 plus 5 plus 5 equals 550. Can you move only one of these hexagons to make this equation true? If you weren't able to figure it out, here's a hint. You can make the equation true by moving this piece of the plus sign. Okay, so here's the answer. You can take that piece of the plus sign and move it up to the top left of the plus sign to turn that into a four. And now you have the equation 545 plus five equals 550, which is a true equation. Puzzle number 10. You are blindfolded and handed 10 cards. You are told exactly four of the cards are face up. How can you divide the cards into two piles so that there are an equal number of cards face up in each pile. So for example, if you're dealt these 10 cards and then you just randomly divide them up into two piles, let's say a pile of five and a pile of five, you're not guaranteed that there's an equal number of cards facing up in each of those piles. How could you make two piles so that you know there is an equal number of cards facing up in each pile? If you haven't been able to figure it out, Here's a hint. The piles you make don't have to be of an equal size, and you're allowed to flip any cards you want. Okay, so here's the answer. Divide the cards into two piles. The first pile, pile one, has four cards in it, and the second pile, pile two, has six cards in it. Now think of these two equations. Cards face up in pile one plus cards face up in pile two have to equal four. But also, the cards face up in pile one plus the cards face down in pile one has to equal four. So looking at those two equations, that should tell you that the cards face up in pile two has to be equal to the cards face down in pile one. So if we flip all the cards in pile one, all the cards that were face down now become face up. And now we have two piles that have an equal number of cards face up. So the answer is to just divide the cards into a pile of four and a pile of six, and then flip all of the cards that are in pile four. And now you have an equal number of cards face up in each pile. If you want an extra challenge, what would you do if we altered this question a little bit and said that you were dealt 52 cards and were told that 10 of them were face up? So that's it for all of these math or number puzzles. Let me know in the comments the answers to the challenges I gave you and which one of these puzzles you found hard and which ones you liked. And also let me know would you like it if I made a top 10 video about the best riddles or best logic puzzles. Jensen,